Well, this is where we rested our heads. We still don't really know what this room is. But all I do know is it's very spidery. Look at this place. We're still very much in the grounds of the chateau. Just a stone's throw from these buildings, but we really don't know what this building is. What's its purpose? Either way, it was our bedroom last night, so look at it. Look at it. We could have had a room each. Shall we? Could have had a room each, yeah. Thanks to some last minute negotiations the night before, today would be a crucial day. Firstly, we had to get to a town called Brig, where we had two child scooters waiting for us, courtesy of our next subscriber, Leo. With these scooters, we plan to hitchhike up to the dizzying heights of the Simplon Pass before rolling 15 miles down to the Italian border. Dangerous? Probably. But we badly needed not to die during that, because waiting for us further downstream was another young man called Ayrton, who had an even bigger treat for us in store in the shape of two old kayaks. It was imperative that we reached Ayrton by nightfall, for everyone's sake, before kayaking off towards the colossal Lake Maggiore, where we aimed to find ourselves another innovative place to sleep. Yeah, safe to say, today was a tall order. So, although we would have quite liked to have figured out what the hell this place was, we had to get moving. Let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. We quickly freshened ourselves up and headed on down into town for some breakfast and planning, which began with an unexpected text from Leo, who we were planning to meet in Brig. This is his text. So I just stashed the two scooters safely in a locker at Briggs train station. The locker number is 125 and you'll find the key by going left when entering through the main entrance and walking up to the photo box thing. Presumably he means like where you take your passport photos. The key is inside a fisherman's friend mint packet in the crack between the wall and the left <laughs> box thing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's it. So whether we'll find that, whether it's still there, whether a member of staff, like a cleaner, has just took that, <laughs> who knows, but um, that's what we're faced with. The other worrying thing is, is the weather down on the Italian side of the pass where we're meant to be kayaking down a river uh, is apparently, according to the guy who's uh, supplying the kayaks, very windy and stormy. So that, that could also be a problem. So. Off we headed to Sierre train station. <coughs> Shut up. <laughs> I was hopeful. I mean, if we could convince this woman it was night time. Bonsoir. Bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> then surely we could convince some bull ticket man not to give us a fine. We are actually a bit nervous now because uh, the trains are a lot smaller than we thought they'd be. Very compact and very intimate. Uh, we're just going to play dumb and just be like, oh, the lady in the B&B said we could pay on the train. I don't know. Our plan was to spot the ticket guy, head to the other side of the train and sit there obliviously. What, you saw him? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck it, we're both going to the toilet. <laughs> that plan lasted long. You might have a shit, mate. Great. <laughs> but our new laboratory-based plan seemed solid enough. Every minute that passed, it felt less and less likely that we'd be rumbled. Until, off camera, we heard a loud, firm, authoritative knock on the thin toilet door, followed closely by some stern words. And you didn't have to speak much French to figure out what they meant. Quickly, Greg thought on his feet and took action while I stayed hidden. Hello? Oh. Oh. As soon as we heard the first announcement for VISP, Greg boldly opened the toilet door to leave. With the coast clear, 
he headed over to wherever the ticket man wasn't. And as the train came to an absolute stop, I followed. Here we go. It seemed we'd got away with it again, with only a few dodgy looks my end, and one woman near Greg who had alerted the ticket man of his toilet exit. Yeah, I just walked down the carriage as far as I could and, and peed on the side and I was like, well, you should be alright now because you're on your own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we did well to get out of that one alive, to be honest. Uh, but it's hitchhike time again, I guess. Hitchhike time. Unless we Brick. walk. I don't know. Well, there's the sign to Brig, so that's a start. Looks like with that one train stop, that very terrifying train stop, we're now in German territory. This meant that Greg was now effectively useless at communicating with people, and I was suddenly useful. At least with the discovery of this ring, he now had the ability to propose to a beautiful woman. To a girl with it. <laughs> it's gotta be done, mate. We waited for 23 minutes before Raffaella, a 58-year-old interior designer, invited us into her car, where my German skills were already being put to the test. Um, Kleiner. It's not my album. Play the gal. Wales. Wales. For Wales. Wales. Yeah. <laughs> Lesson one: Where are you from? Lesson two. Discuss the complex issue of the migrant crisis in Europe. No, no. Nein, es ist nicht so einfach, aber es wäre auch nicht so schwer. Mm. Ich glaube, sie sagen uns immer, es ist nicht so einfach. Ich glaube nicht, dass es so schwierig ist. Aber wo wollt ihr jetzt? Macht ihr weiter mit Autostopp? Lovely lady, Raffaella, but she's dropped us off in Brig. Now, let's see if we can find this elusive, mysterious fisherman's friend packet look there is a photo booth okay we're gonna need to get we the need phone to, out we need to get the map out right oh he's just texted me saying oh don't worry they don't usually control that line uh bullshit leo they <laughs> don't. Um, <laughs> right what did he actually say the keys inside Fisherman's friend <laughs> mint packet in the crack between the wall and the left box thing. The left. Ah, uh -huh, here, mate. There's a crack between the wall here. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Get the spider webs off. Leo, you're a legend, mate. We went off in search of the lockers, like two excitable year sevens on their first day at school. You know, it's the Chuckle Brothers. But just like a year seven, I had some difficulty opening it. Oh, for no, it's a really good, a really good. It took the teachings of an older, wiser man to guide me towards success. Aha! <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> and then proceed to laugh at our possessions. <laughs> well, Leo, if you're watching this, which I hope you are. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, mate. That's ingenious. And with that, we bid our old master lockpick farewell. Ciao. And shot out onto the sun-baked tarmac, wheels pointing straight for the mountains. <laughs> we continued north along the smooth slate footpaths of Briggs Shopping District. How's everyone doing all right? <laughs> before popping out on the picturesque cobbles of the town square. Ah, yes. Where we guzzled down pints of fresh mountain water from the fountain. Just after this, but before this, wow, we'd actually scooted past Raffaella, confusing the shit out of her, most likely. Ah, it's just lovely, isn't it? And before too long, we'd reached the point at which the mountain road sprouts away from the edge of town. Oh, hi there, sir. The ideal place for us to hitch what was our most important ride yet. That smells good, man. <laughs> <laughs> it smells good. 
Cheese. <laughs> Cheddar cheese. Ice cream and cheese in the morning. We had contemplated sneaking into this water park, but decided that neither of us could bear the idea of our only potential lift driving past while we were in there. Overcautious? Well, what actually happened was even more far-fetched, but we'll get to that. With our kebab shop pizza box lid, which we found in a bin, we began what I thought would be a straightforward hitchhike. Italy, here we come. <laughs> well, there ain't as many cars on this road, but I'm hoping that in this remote mountain location, uh, they're more likely to stop. But as the minutes rolled by, so did the cars. And as you watch these clips, you can actually see the hope drain from our faces. It wasn't long before we found ourselves wishing we'd asked that bloke at the bus stop for some of his chongi cheddar to help pass the time. I've had enough of this bollocks, mate. Let's just get the bus. <laughs> this is slow moving. For some reason, there's a hell of a lot of buses, but no one seems to be travelling towards the Simplon Pass. Don't really know why. There's hardly... This is the way we found out. We've asked people, this is the way. There's no Italian cars. There's no Italian number plates, so it's quite confusing. How about this guy? No, we're not going up there, see? Sometime later, Greg asked a local man if he could look at his Google Maps to see if there was a better spot anywhere nearby. And the upshot was that there was. That one goes. So, mission up let's walk up. There's a uh, drawing onto that road. We need to go there. Let's do it. Yeah. A trek in this searing heat and with this little sleep was a grim thought, but the cool mist from this water gun and the prospect of a naughty shortcut got us going again. Gonna cut up here, I think. Scooters in hand. One thing Greg and I had taken from our younger days was that even the briefest of missions could throw up a surprise. And in the middle of this confusing little patchwork of fields, we stumbled across a shrine. A shrine to our childhood. Mate. Yeah, that's sick. It's wicked. Love it. We'd have been well proud of this, mate, when we were 13. We made good use of our newly claimed den yeah. by scouting out the least right, trespassy there. route ahead. I think there's, it's gardens on the left, but I think on the right we can get through. <laughs> yeah, you're pretty low, mate. <laughs> Before popping back out on the road 20 minutes later than we would have done if we'd have just followed it. Then, an issue. The layout of the junction itself offered no chance for cars to pull over meaning we were effectively stuck back on the same road as we were before. No, oh, that's no good. Getting stranded here in the Rhone Valley was now, in my mind, a big possibility. But it wasn't an option. Because over in Italy, Ayrton and his pals were getting ready to spend the entire afternoon carrying our two kayaks over a kilometer down to the river from his house. There was no way we were letting these kids down. So. I decided to leave Greg in search of a better spot further down the motorway. A lay-by, perhaps, a service station, or even just a better junction. It was a bad idea. Dangerous, unfruitful, and almost sunstroke-inducing. A completely futile jaunt, which ended up taking me through part of a fully functioning quarry. Dehydrated, dusty and spent, I headed back to Greg to drink an unfair share of our remaining water. Right, we've settled for this spot. It's good enough, they can pull over here. Just got to hope and pray now that we get this lift. This is without a shadow of a doubt the slowest craft I've ever seen. <laughs> and that just about summed up our day. Plenty of gesturing and apologies from the locals, but no one heading up that mountain road. Until 
after nearly three and a half hours since we first donned the sign. Oh, oh finally. Don't have AC, that already stopped working, so I'm sorry about that. No, don't no worry. Come on, open up the window in the back. Our Swiss saviour was called Tom, beekeeper by evening, chiropractor by day. And again, incredibly friendly, generous, all-round good guy. Oh, really? Off camera, he told us that he'd actually driven past us on his way into Brig three hours earlier, and that he'd said to himself, if those poor guys are still there when I drive back, I'll pick them up. Thank God for Tom, and thank God we didn't piss around in that water park. We'd probably still be stuck at the foot of these mountains, and instead, we were enjoying the breathtaking views from up on top of them. And most importantly, on schedule to meet Ayrton. So you, are you a big Chili's fan? Well, <laughs> I like him, yes. <laughs> See, this one, this one says Red Hot Chiropractors. So it's, I had to it's say a Red Hot yeah. Chiropractors. Ah, <laughs> yeah. read it well enough. <laughs> Slight misunderstanding. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but aside from exposing Greg's mild dyslexia, Tom also had some sincere concerns regarding our plan to scooter down a road like this. See, that's what I'm saying. This is, this is uh, pretty dangerous to go yeah. through. You don't really want to do that. Let's face it, he had a point. But we didn't spend four francs on that locker for nothing. And we were going to try our best to make these scooters an integral part of our adventure. Pleasure. Thanks so much. Very nice to meet you. Tom, all the best. Thanks so much. Yeah. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Thank you. Lovely guy, mate. They're all just lovely guys. Another just lovely stellar chap. They've all just got PhDs in being a lovely guy. <laughs> oh, I'm just happy to be here, mate. What about you? Put this godforsaken piece of shit in here. Good riddance. Right, we're at the highest point here, I think. So, let's cart ourselves down. Yeah! This is what I'm talking about, mate. High up in the cool, fresh air of the apex of the Simplon Pass, the road was gentle and quiet, the tarmac smooth as anything. Hello! And this crazy plan seemed to be working, but very soon we found ourselves hurtling down into the valley, where the gradients became deceivingly steep. Fucking hell! Oh, God! It became very hard not to reach a speed at which the scooter wobbled violently. And because, along with the breathtaking views, there were some lorries, we were keen not to go flying into the road. This is bizarre. The solution to this terrifying thought was to keep our rear feet wedged firmly on our thin metal brakes, which created another problem. Oh, God. The tarmac in places was so damn smooth that it took almost all of our strength to stay in control. Mate, slow down, man. Fucking lunatic. But we were having so much fun that we totally ignored the possible implications of such an insane amount of friction. That was heaven. The unbearable noise that you can now hear is Greg's rear wheel scraping against the now superheated strip of aluminium that had been forced against it for the past mile and a half. Shut up! I was about to find out just how hot it had become. I think my go. Really? Yeah. <laughs> The plastic on Greg's foot is melting. The rubber is melting. <laughs> because of that. And what's happened to the wheel? Oh, 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 nah, mate. <laughs> I know. No, 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 mate. Fuck, mate, I was gonna say, don't touch it. You know how hot that. Fuck me, why did I touch that? You know, if my uh, soul was melting, imagine how hot the metal is. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. When your foot starts to get hot, uh, stop. With no tap to run my blistering fingers under, we resumed our epic descent, Greg's scooter becoming more and more deafening with each sweeping bend. Fuck it out! Seriously harming the hearing of confused, innocent bystanders as we stopped for regular cooldowns. Jesus wept. 
Get that away from me right now. <laughs> For most people, these incredible views would be enough to find pleasure in, but not us. Right. Right, spit on that now. Hold it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Wait, the metal is starting to chop. <laughs> it's actually starting to like, oh, fucking hell. Mate, that is baking. I'd love to know the temperature of that. One of the only niggling thoughts in my mind, except being ambushed by an aroused eagle, were the tunnels that Tom had warned us of. But it wasn't an issue, thanks to the sanctuary of this lovely smooth path. Woohoo! Yeah! Where finally we were blessed with fresh running water. <laughs> Mate, that was absolutely steaming. All we needed now was an egg, but we were never going to find one of those. What do you mean serve yourself what though? Oh wow. Unbelievably, just two miles down this remote, vehicleless mountain road was a chicken farm complete with its own self-service refrigerated egg bar. A concept so bizarre, it took a while to sink in. Here's the deal, we're gonna buy six eggs from this self-service egg bar. I'm gonna go flat out. We're gonna go flat out down, down here. here. We're gonna see if we can cook bits of egg on Greg's scooter and eat them because we're actually quite hungry so, <laughs> so uh yeah, just wear your spit spin as well oh so. yeah lovely Three well we're leaving switzerland anyway so we need to get rid of this shit cheers arnold daniel, daniel. <laughs> here we go mate fucking cook the thing cook it shit i hope i don't fall with these Doing it here. <laughs> shit, shit, that didn't work. <laughs> oh, I broke the egg. Oh. oh, that is a disaster. Okay, there we go, there we go. Right, uh, I'm not sure that's worked. No, I don't think the oh, we've made a bit of a mess as well, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not as hot is it no the brakes not nowhere near as hot mate For some reason it's been like fixed somehow oh mate what the wheel oh the wheel's fucked <laughs> <laughs> the wheel's broke <laughs> shit John all right spotted that mate. i think that has cooked a bit though <laughs> well we set out to cook egg <laughs> and we bloody well did it <laughs> <laughs> Tastes like raw red. <laughs> With Greg's rear wheel and this poor man's drive now in a terrible state, we gracefully swept our way into what would regrettably be the last stop for our brave little scooters. The picturesque mountain village of Simplon Dorf, where Greg quickly established himself as the laughing stock of the village. <laughs> Look at, look at this twat. <laughs> at the heart of its enchanting cobbled streets was the village square. Oh yeah. Where after stopping for quite literally the best sandwich I've ever had. Best sandwich ever. <laughs> Berkeley. <laughs> we thought about our next move, starting with what to do with these. Oh, they're still there, mate, unfortunately. <laughs> I think they belong in a rubbish tip, don't they, really? Hello. Oh. I love precincts and strawberry breath. The problem was, apart from us, it was a pretty childless town. The only real inhabitants were cultured, short-haired, middle-aged women called Bettina. But we had to leave them somewhere. I mean, mine's going here. I don't know about <laughs> yours, but mine simply has to go there. It really does. It really does. And that's where it's going to stay forevermore. It does look good. Your turn, mate. Who are you going to lumber that with? <laughs> yes! 
Yes, well, it's brilliant. <laughs> and that's the end of that. Bye, Simplon. On to the next little chapter. It was now gone four o'clock and we were still 40 miles from Ayrton and the kayaks. We were now relying heavily on a lift again, but this time we had no sign and an increasingly hazardous road to deal with. Shit, yeah, we can't get check here, obviously. Should we try and go through the tunnel, like through the works bit? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah. They don't seem too bothered, so. With no protest from the workers, we decided to walk the tunnel in our search for a good hitchhiking spot. But when we finally popped out, it was more of the same. Dangerous tunnels with no chance of cars stopping. But then we noticed something. That is the way we need to go, towards Domo do Sola, through the gorge and down towards Lake Maggiore. So basically we're going to cut right the way down through these fields. Straight line mission. Swiss border special. Pretty steep drop here. Oh, buzzing. Oh, yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Don't mind us, officer. We haven't been up to no harm, we haven't. It was another successful shortcut mission. Hello. And our reward? A perfect hitchhiking spot. This is our spot. Hopefully this can get us right down this valley into Italy to the kayaks, which are waiting patiently for us. Much needed cardboard was kindly donated by the lovely lady at the restaurant you can see in the background. This is my latest piece. It's called Desperation. <laughs> but it was now once again in the hands of the Alpine gods. I sung a silly song to keep myself entertained. Able, carry up my needs, are you able? Oh, wait, he's putting it over. Sound is a pound, bro. Sound is a fucking pound. It worked. So, Hello. speak English. Hello. Little. Don was a solar? Yes. This is Alfio, a reserved but wise old fellow who was actually on his way back from Geneva, where he'd been designing cars. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> a good painter. A good painter. The Da Vinci of cars. <laughs> <laughs> As Greg's first ever taste of Italy drew nearer, we enjoyed spectacular views of the Gondo Gorge, where Alfio confessed his strong disliking for a certain English market town. You must be good. I don't like this country. Uh, Italy. No, Yeovil. Yeovil. <laughs> the weather is not uh, nice. No. We're crossing into Italy. Wow. First time in Italy for Greg. Here I am. Land of my father. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad first impression to have either. It was truly a stunning valley. But I was still concerned about finding Ayrton and the kayaks. We were just about on schedule to meet him, but with only a rough map-based memory of the exact point on the river at which we'd agreed to meet, there were still question marks over how easily we'd find it. And all it took was a slight misunderstanding between ourselves and Alfio, and we found ourselves in another pickle. We're miles away. <laughs> we are absolutely miles away. Now, I mean, it's just... Alfio's accidental overshot meant that we were 2.5 miles downstream of Ayrton. It was now a case of utilizing every ounce of our combined directional skills and missioning experience to get back up that valley and to the kayaks before dark. Forests did their best to disorientate us, but Inevitably, there was only one result. Well, I'm just going to put it in. in my this. God, you're professional. <laughs> I'm trying my best. Oh, mate, good to see you there. <laughs> We'd found and followed the river to Ayrton and his friends, and only 30 minutes over schedule. We might have some eggs for you. 
some eggs? Oh, okay. Eggs? <laughs> we can't do anything with it. <laughs> They're really good eggs. They're from the, um, the valley. <laughs> Why you bought them? Because I... his scooter was so hot yeah. that we cooked an egg on his scooter. <laughs> Honestly, if we take these, they're just gonna they're gonna get smashed. Yeah, they're gonna yeah probably. So, yeah. so. I mean, he's a cook. <laughs> he's a professional cook. So oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I made scrambled eggs for breakfast. <laughs> we spent a hilarious few minutes with Ayrton and his chums attempting to pack our kayaks, but unfortunately, we had to set sail. With a heave and a push and a dose of terrible Italian from Greg, Buongiorno. <laughs> Ciao. we were away. Thanks for everything. See ya. Almost. Oh my GoPro. <laughs> Thanks everyone for your efforts. Bye. You're all legends. Bye. You're, oh fuck, I'm beached. Yeah, that, oh, that God. Oh, wait, push me. I don't. Go. Oh Jesus. Not that hard. <laughs> fuck it out. <hell. laughs> Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. See ya. Arriva Dirty. I feel amazing. The next chapter of the adventure is underway. Now we've just got to find a good place to sleep. Good place to get some grub. It's eight o'clock now. So we need to get our skates on, get to the lake, which is about three kilometers away, and tomorrow conquer the bulk of Lake Maggiore, which we haven't got a clue what it looks like. Should be in for a treat. The remaining two miles of the river were calm, deep, and some of the most peaceful moments I'd had in years, I think. It felt like the river was all ours. Around each bend, a different place all to ourselves to drift silently through. Until inevitably, it started to open up into Lake Maggiore. It was a beautiful moment as it was. And then we turned around. We didn't even realise that that was behind us. That is just... It really feels like we're leaving a beautiful day behind us. And sort of... Careering into pastures new. Careering into the darkness. Yeah, careering into the darkness. The uncertainty of the darkness. We decided to follow the shore around to the left, beckoned by the glow of distant towns, when our attention was caught by a curious sound skimming its way across the surreal silver surface of the lake. Wait, look, it's some of the water going really fast. Underwater. Yeah. yeah. It sounded like some sort of remote control speedboat, but there were more lights and general buzz coming from that area. And with darkness imminent, we were keen to go and check it out. Leaving our kayaks and bags on a secluded little beach, we snuck over to what we thought was either a lakeside leisure centre or a sort of family campsite to scout it out. But it was even better. Ciao. What we'd stumbled onto was the sun lounger strewn beach of a lakeside holiday park. It's fucking huge. It's a holiday home. It fucking smells gorgeous. It smells like garlic and it's fucking amazing. The more exploring we did, the more its size and grandeur overwhelmed and excited us. I mean, could we sleep in there? No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he is just hilarious. <laughs> this is incredible. It was actually too good. Just figured out you need wristbands to be in here. We were unable to enjoy the facilities or mingle with the local Germans, so we began searching for our bed for the night. Oh. But it was just too efficient an establishment, which explains the high numbers of said Germans. So, with a clear sky above us, we decided to sleep on the sun loungers. The only thing was, we were fucking ravenous. And without wristbands, we risked food rejection and even park ejection. But it didn't matter. Our hunger was too immense, so we hatched a plan. Greg's gone to scout it out, see if we can get a pizza. 
We might get rumbled because we haven't got wristbands. So we'll see. Well, we're in. Mm -hmm. We're in in our long sleeves, boiling hot. I'm absolutely roasting. This is meant to keep you warm in like the Pennines. <laughs> in this roasting hot Italian setting. But a long, hard fought day was duly rewarded, and our wristbandlessness was rightfully ignored. We could head back in the dead of night to the sun loungers with a full stomach, and by God, we'd need it tomorrow. You can't see anything, but we're surrounded by sun loungers on the beach here, and uh, we're going to sleep on one. Which well, two, is hopefully. Two, hopefully. <laughs> so, providing it doesn't rain, or the chubby security guard that we saw earlier doesn't come patrolling, then uh, we should be all right. It's really warm out here and it's fucking lovely. <laughs> See you in the morning. We could get ourselves in a really bad way if we're not careful today. Here we go. We're <laughs> <laughs> crashing a wedding. Fucking hell! Job done.